Chapter 1. The Story of the Ghost Ship Kate and Mike Sullivan live in San Francisco with their parents and their pet dog, Lucky. Their home is on Russian Hill, and from their house, Kate and Mike have a great view of San Francisco Bay and the Golden Gate Bridge. Their father, Frank Sullivan, is a professor and teaches marine biology at San Francisco University. Their mother, Liz Sullivan, works in a big bookshop in the city center. Kate is 14, and her brother Mike is 15. Kate goes to Lincoln Middle School, and Mike goes to Galileo High School. Kate is a pretty girl with long blonde hair and blue eyes. She likes school, but doesn't like math. She loves dancing and belongs to the Lincoln Dance Club. She's a very good dancer and wants to become a professional dancer one day. Mike is tall with brown hair and blue eyes. He is in his first year of high school, and he always has a lot of homework. He is an excellent swimmer and is a member of the Galileo High School swimming team. Our story begins on a sunny Monday morning early in June. Half past seven, said Kate, putting on her watch. Time for breakfast. Two more weeks and school is over, said Mike happily. Summer vacation, the best time of the year, <laughs> said Kate laughing. Kate was also excited because after the summer, she was going to start high school. Good morning, said Mrs. Sullivan, who was preparing breakfast. Kate, remember you have an eye doctor's appointment today after school with Dr. Lee. Please don't be late. I know, Mom, said Kate. But I don't want to go. I don't want to wear glasses. Kate, you can't study well at school. You need a pair of glasses. If you don't get them, your eyesight will get worse, said Mr. Sullivan, drinking a cup of coffee. There's nothing wrong with glasses. I wear them. A lot of kids wear them. Susan Garcia in my class just got glasses, said Mike. And she looks better with glasses than without them. Kate slowly ate her breakfast and said, Okay, okay. I'll wear them to see the board. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. It was Julie Bennett, Kate's best friend. Hi, said Julie, a pretty 14-year-old girl with short black hair. I came to pick you up so we can walk to school together. Hi, Julie, said Kate. I'm still having breakfast. Just sit down and have some cookies. Hi, Julie, said Mrs. Sullivan, as she turned on the television to watch the weather report and the morning news. Another warm, sunny day in San Francisco, said the speaker, with heavy afternoon fog along the Pacific coast, particularly in the Bodega Bay area. It's always foggy in Bodega Bay, said Mike. Do you remember our adventure up there? When did you go to Bodega Bay? Asked Julie, eating a cookie. It was about 18 months ago, said Kate. And Carlos Gomez came with us. We had quite an adventure. Sounds exciting, said Julie. Tell me about it. Kate looked at Mike and her parents, and they all started laughing. <laughs> well, Mom and I have to go to work said Mr. Sullivan. It's getting late. See you this evening. Bye. Okay, let me tell you about it, said Kate, looking at her watch. Mom, Dad, Mike, Carlos, and I went to the Farallon Islands on Dad's new boat, the Pelican. He was studying the seabirds and the fish in the area. We were all excited about the trip, but the first night, I saw the ghost of a boy near my bed. I screamed and was scared, but no one believed me. Then, one night, Mom and Dad heard a ship's bell and saw a yellow light at sea. 
They thought someone needed help, so they took the lifeboat and left the pelican. The next morning, we couldn't find them, and we were worried. We took the boat and went to look for them. In the fog, we saw a strange old ship, the Sonora. Later, we discovered that it was an old Spanish pirate ship that was lost at sea in 1608. What? A ship that was lost 400 years ago? Cried Julie, who stopped eating. Yes, it was a ghost ship, said Kate. We knew Mom and Dad were on that ship because their lifeboat was there. We were scared, but we went onto the ship and we had a terrible surprise. The ship's crew were all ghosts. Ghosts of sailors and pirates. We were terrified because we saw Mom and Dad sitting in a corner. We went to help them, but then the ghost of Captain Salamanca spoke to us. He was terrible. He killed people, and they became part of his crew of ghosts. He said he needed a big crew because he was looking for some lost treasure. He wanted to kill us all. Suddenly, Lucky jumped on the table, and a big candle fell, and a fire started. Ghosts are afraid of fire, so they moved away, and we helped Mom and Dad get off the ship. Before leaving, Mike saw Captain Salamanca's treasure map on the table and took it. What an adventure, said Julie. Do you still have the treasure map? Mike has it, said Kate. But he hid it because it's a big secret. That afternoon, Kate went to the eye doctor with Julie. Dr. Lee was a friendly young man. He gave her an eye test and said, Kate, you need glasses to see things in the distance. Julie helped Kate choose her new glasses, and she gave them to Dr. Lee, who said, Good choice. They'll be ready on Thursday, Kate. Chapter 2. A New Adventure Friday was a big day for Kate because she wore her new glasses to school for the first time. When she walked into the classroom, everyone turned around and looked at her. Wow! They said. New glasses! Kate's heart was beating fast and her hands felt cold. She walked to her desk and sat down. Hi, Kate, said Tom, the boy she liked. New glasses? You look great. Thanks, Tom, said Kate, turning red with embarrassment. His opinion was very important to her. I really like your new glasses, said her friend Kelly. Kate suddenly felt happy and was ready for the lesson. A math test. That evening at the dinner table, the Sullivan family was having a noisy conversation because everyone had something to say. Well, how was your day at school, Kate? Asked her mother. Oh, just great, Mom, said Kate, smiling. Everyone liked my new glasses, even Tom. And the math test was okay, I think. And how was your day, Mike? Asked his father. Exciting, Mike said. Guess what? Our science class is going to Muir Woods National Park next week. It's part of a class project on trees, forests, and conservation. We're leaving early on Tuesday morning and coming back before dinner time. Muir Woods, said Mrs. Sullivan. It's one of the most beautiful forests in the world. Sounds like fun said Kate. Well, this evening I have some exciting news, too, said Mr. Sullivan. Everyone at the table looked at him. He usually didn't have anything exciting to say. What is it, Frank? said Mrs. Sullivan, who wanted to know the news. Next week, I'm going to the Monterey Bay Aquarium to talk to Professor Simpson, said Mr. Sullivan. The aquarium is doing an important study on sea life in the Pacific Ocean, particularly on the great white shark. 
They want me to spend some time at the Farallon Islands and the Point Reyes National Seashore. Another trip to the Farallon Islands, said his wife, smiling. Wow, Dad, do you mean you're going to the Farallons and Point Reyes on the Pelican? Asked Mike, looking at Kate. Yes, that's right, said Mr. Sullivan. I'll probably stay about a week and moor the Pelican in the harbor at Bodega Bay. When are you going? Asked Kate excitedly. At the end of June or the beginning of July, said Mr. Sullivan. Can, Can we, we come, come along? along? Cried Kate and Mike. Of course, said Mr. Sullivan, laughing. What about Lucky? Asked Kate. Lucky heard his name and started barking. <coughs> yes, Lucky can come too, said Mr. Sullivan. Ah, it'll be great fun like last time, said Mike. But without the ghosts, said Kate nervously. Yes, without the ghosts and the ghost ship, <laughs> said Mrs. Sullivan, who still remembered that terrible adventure. Oh, Dad, can we invite Carlos like last time? asked Mike. Carlos Gomez was Mike's best friend. He was Hispano American, and he spoke Spanish and English perfectly. He was a tall, friendly boy with short black hair and dark eyes, and he lived near the Sullivans. Why not? said Mr. Sullivan, smiling at his son. Thanks, Dad, cried Mike, who started making secret plans. Kate and Mike helped their parents clean up after dinner. Then they went up to Mike's bedroom. Mike closed the door, and Kate put on some music. What do you think of the news? asked Mike. I can hardly believe it, said Kate. Where did you put Captain Salamanca's old treasure map? It's in a safe place, said Mike, looking at the big bookshelf on the wall. Now we can study the map and start looking for the treasure. Dad will be busy with his work, and Mom always helps him. We'll be free. This is going to be a great summer said Kate. Wait until I tell Carlos, said Mike, picking up his cell phone. Yeah, said Kate. And he can help us understand the map. The words are written in Spanish. Chapter 3. The Treasure Map Mike's science class had a great time at Muir Woods National Park. Miss Williamson, the science teacher, showed them some of the world's oldest and tallest trees. She was everyone's favorite teacher at Galileo High because her classes were always interesting and fun. She started the Galileo Science Club, and Mike and Carlos were both members. There were club meetings every Wednesday afternoon after school. When Mike and Carlos came back from Muir Woods, they went to Carlos's house to talk about their summer trip. I'm really excited about this trip, said Carlos. With the old pirate map, we can look for the treasure. And if we're lucky, we'll find it, said Mike. It won't be easy, said Carlos. Pirates were clever people, and their maps had secret messages that are difficult to understand. Do you have the map with you? No, I hid it on the bookshelf in my room, said Mike. Only Kate knows where it is. Do your parents know about it? Asked Carlos. No, not yet, said Mike. My mom always says, be careful, it's dangerous. They laughed, and Carlos said, My parents are the same. Everything that's fun is dangerous. But we'll be careful, said Mike. Next time, let's meet at your house, and we can look at the map said Carlos. Good idea, said Mike. It's all written in Spanish. No problem for me, said Carlos, laughing. Friday was the last day of school, and everyone talked about their exciting vacation plans. That evening, Mr. Sullivan told his family more about the trip, and Mike and Kate listened carefully. We'll sail next Wednesday from Marina Harbor, 
and go north to Bodega Bay, where we'll moor the pelican. We'll probably stay five or six days. I have to work at Point Reyes National Seashore and the Farallon Islands, and Mom is going to help me. Now, will you three be okay? Do you have something to do, or will you get bored? Oh, we won't get bored, Dad, said Kate, thinking about the treasure map. Don't worry, Dad, said Mike. Kate, Carlos, and I can stay on the beach, play in the sea, or go for walks in the hills. All right, <laughs> said Mrs. Sullivan. You can stay on the beach, but you mustn't swim in the sea. Remember, this is the Pacific Ocean, and there are a lot of sharks, and they swim close to the beach. They're very dangerous. Mike laughed and said, We'll be careful, Mom, and we won't go swimming. You're free to do what you want during the day, said Mr. Sullivan. But we'll meet for dinner on the Pelican every evening at about six. If you have any problems, just call or text Mom or me on our cell phones. Kate and Mike went upstairs and phoned Carlos. Hi, Carlos, said Mike. Can you come to my house right now? We can look at the map and start making plans. I'll be there in ten minutes, said Carlos happily. Mike took the old treasure map from the bookshelf and put it on his desk. When Carlos arrived, the three of them sat around the desk and looked at it carefully. Gee, this is exciting, said Carlos, touching it. An old pirate map. Look, that's where Bodega Bay is, but it doesn't say that. It just says Bahia. That's interesting because today in Spanish, Bay is Bahia, but maybe the spelling was different in the 1600s. Looking at this map, we can see a town already existed there at that time. It was probably a pirate's town, said Mike. There's a big harbor, the perfect place for pirates to hide. Ah, this is also very interesting, because my book on the history of California says that Bodega Bay wasn't discovered until 1775. Looking at this map, people lived in the area long before. Look on the corner of the map, said Kate. There's a date, 1608. That's the year of the shipwreck of the Sonora, said Carlos. Captain Salamanca probably hid his treasure that year, before the shipwreck in November. Hmm, well, what else does it say on his map? Asked Mike. Hmm, north of the town there's the word cementerio. In Spanish that means cemetery, said Carlos. It was probably the town cemetery. Near the cemetery, there's a place called Hacienda Estrada, said Mike. And there's a small river near it called Rio Estrada. Hacienda means a big farm or ranch, and Estrada was probably the name of the family who owned it, said Carlos. Look, there's a drawing of a lighthouse on the coast, said Mike. There's a big black X east of the town with the word agua, said Kate. Agua in Spanish means water, said Carlos. That was probably where the pirates got their drinking water, a water well. There's some red lines that go south from the town to what is now Doran Beach, said Mike. But where's the treasure? asked Kate. Ah, good question, said Mike. The places on the map are probably important clues. We have almost a week to explore them, said Carlos. Why don't we start with the water well, said Kate excitedly. That's a good place to hide a treasure. Okay, okay. said Mike and Carlos. That'll be the first place we look, said Mike. Chapter 4 The Treasure Chest the Pelican left Marina Harbor in San Francisco on a foggy Wednesday morning. Early in the afternoon, the Sullivans and Carlos got to the town of Bodega Bay and moored the boat at the small pier. 
They had lunch, and then Mr. Sullivan said, Your mom and I have to start working, and we're sailing to Point Reyes. We'll be back at the pier at dinner time. Have fun. Thanks, Thanks, said the three friends. See you at dinner. They got off the pelican and watched it sail away. Do you have the map? asked Carlos. Yeah, it's in my bag, said Mike, looking at his watch. It's half past two. We have about four hours before dinner time. This is exciting, said Kate. We can start on our treasure hunt. Mike took the map out and said, Let's start with the water well. The three friends looked at the map carefully. The water well is east of the town, said Carlos. The harbor is west of the town and the hills are east. We have to go to the hills. They looked east and saw some brown hills. Let's explore them, said Mike, and see if the water well is still there. We can follow this path. They followed the path into the hills and spent the afternoon looking for the water well. But they found nothing. Lucky had a lot of fun running up and down the hills, and everyone enjoyed watching him. I don't think there's a water well in these hills, said Kate, who was hot and tired. And I'm thirsty. There's nothing in these hills, said Carlos, laughing. Hey, guys, it's almost five o'clock, said Mike. It's time to go back. Dinner is at half past six. On the way back, we can stop at the supermarket and buy some cold drinks. Good idea, said Kate. We didn't have much luck today. We'll explore the area south of Bodega Bay tomorrow, said Mike. Yeah, there are red lines that go all the way to Doran Beach, said Carlos. Red lines probably mean something. I hope so, said Mike. Dinner time was fun because Mrs. Sullivan cooked a great meal and everyone had something to say about the day. After dinner, they all played cards and went to bed early. The next morning, Mrs. Sullivan made sandwiches for Kate, Mike, and Carlos. Dad and I are going to go to Point Reyes again today, said Mrs. Sullivan. Where are you going? Oh, we're going to take a long walk on the beach, said Kate. Uh, don't forget to put on some sun protection then. See you at dinner, said Mrs. Sullivan. Have fun. Kate, Mike, and Carlos started walking south to Doran Beach, and Lucky ran ahead of them. It was a beautiful sunny day, and there were a lot of people on the beach enjoying the sun. Behind the long beach, there was a tall cliff. Suddenly, Carlos saw a small opening in the cliff. Hey, look over there, he said. There's a small opening. Uh, let's go inside and look around, said Mike. Kate, Carlos, and Lucky slowly followed him. a very good dancer and wants to become a professional dancer one day. Mike is tall with brown hair and blue eyes. He is in his first year of high school and he always has a lot of homework. He is an excellent swimmer and is a member of the Galileo High School swimming team. 
Our story begins on a sunny Monday morning early in June. Half past seven, said Kate, putting on her watch. Time for breakfast. Two more weeks and school is over, said Mike happily. Summer vacation, the best time of the year, <laughs> said Kate, laughing. Kate was also excited because after the summer, she was going to start high school. Good morning, said Mrs. Sullivan, who was preparing breakfast. Kate, remember you have an eye doctor's appointment today after school with Dr. Lee. Please don't be late. I know, Mom, said Kate. But I don't want to go. I don't want to wear glasses. Kate, you can't study well at school. You need a pair of glasses. If you don't get them, your eyesight will get worse, said Mr. Sullivan, drinking a cup of coffee. There's nothing wrong with glasses. I wear them. A lot of kids wear them. Susan Garcia in my class just got glasses, said Mike. And she looks better with glasses than without them. Kate slowly ate her breakfast and said, Okay, okay, I'll wear them to see the board. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. It was Julie Bennett, Kate's best friend. Hi, said Julie, a pretty 